so a kid like Matthew Whale, he doesn't think about limits anymore. Matthew is a courageous young man. Together Jerry with Moran, his mother and with US the help House of the Disability Rights Center, Kansas. Matthew fought for the opportunity to play baseball. Most children and their parents would never think of having to overcome the challenges Matthew and his mom faced just to play Little League. But Matthew faces challenges most of us never will. I was really touched by his strength and his perseverance. The Disability Rights Center stepped up to the plate and helped Matthew hit discrimination out of the park. I'm happy that the judge let me play well. Wichita Transit Case, Wichita, Kansas. We often take our freedom for granted. The freedom to set our own schedule, the freedom to go where we want, when we want. Imagine if you needed to get to work or the grocery store or church and you had no way to get there. For people with disabilities who relied on Wichita public transportation, the freedom to travel around the city was only an illusion. For years, I had heard that the transit system Mike was Oxford, really bad down executive there. Executive director. And that there were lots of problems just through the disability grapevine. They didn't care whether we Sylvia go Tandy, or not. DRC client. You know I mean? We decided we should go down there and really try to see what was going on. And by we, I mean um, our vo all volunteer grassroots disability rights activist group called ADAPT. They saw the injustice happening. At, uh, in Wichita. The buses weren't accessible, there were problems with the fixed route system, and they started advocating. You know, without the accommodations on Chris Testor, board member, DRC. People who are disabled that have to use wheelchairs or scooters would not be able to get to the places that may be too far out of reach to get to. ADAPT went down there, Wichita and we actually Transit took center. over their entire uh, transfer center and really pretty much shut down transit for a while in Wichita to show how inaccessible they were and to demonstrate the lack of compliance with the Americans with Disabilities Act and really try to drive home to everybody how real abysmal they were and that the transit system really wasn't working for people with disabilities at all. So we had many, many different issues that that's how Carolyn we got the Hans, DRC involved. Carolyn Hans, DRC the client. Disability Rights Center. Due to our variety of issues and complaints that we were trying to uh, file against the transit company. Kansas ADAPT started the advocacy through peaceful civil disobedience and testing Wichita's transit system for accessibility. The system failed the test. Ten members of ADAPT filed a lawsuit funded by Tilbrick, which led to vital accessibility changes to the Wichita transit system but the trial judge kicked seven of the ten plaintiffs out of the case because they were testers from outside of Wichita. That was a very negative ruling for the rights of people with disabilities. DRC funded the case from that point on. DRC's attorneys represented the plaintiffs and argued the case all the way to the U.S. Court of Appeals. The appeals court overturned the lower court decision, thus supporting the right of all people with disabilities to enforce the ADA and Rehab Act. The case involving the Wichita Transit Authority I think is a really unique one and it's one that I'm very proud of because it shows a lot of the unique role that we play as a protection advocacy agency. Um, it showed our partnership. We worked in partnership with another nonprofit agency that advocates for the rights of people with disabilities and that's TILRIC, the Topeka Independent Living Resource Center. Um, they worked very closely with uh, ADAPT. Uh, which is an organization that advocates every single day for the rights of people with disabilities. The attorney for Topeka Independent Living at the time, Kirk Lowry, um, filed a lawsuit and, uh, against the Transit Authority over lack of compliance with Title II of the Americans with Disabilities Act. We focused in on the fixed route service primarily just because at the time it seemed the best issue to start with. Our litigation director took that case and DRC funded it up to the Tenth Circuit and the U.S. Court of Appeals, the Tenth Circuit and Denver ruled on it and thankfully ruled in favor of uh, people with disabilities. The results of this collaboration were massive changes to Wichita's public transit system. You know now the buses are accessible. Go down to Wichita and thankfully you know there are accessible buses that are running. Some of the buses they agreed to put a lift on or they also had people who knew how to lift somebody properly. You know, the people who are in chairs 
to make sure that they got seated properly without being hurt. Instead of being dragged or jerked in any way, they would make sure that they knew how to do that. I think also they made the bus schedule in Braille. I was real happy. We even had a party. The Disability Rights Center, one partner fighting to ensure that the freedoms we enjoy are accessible to all. ADA and accessibility is about accessibility for all. It's good for all people. People with disabilities, everyone. What excites me, um, Rocky working Nichols, here at the Executive Center, Director, DRC, is the fact that we can be engaged with the whole process. The DRC's uh, important role is playing the watchdog relative to Rick Kagan, Executive uh, Director, Health Hospitals NAMI, Kansas. Kansas, as well as the nursing facilities for mental health. Oh, well, Chris Testor, board member, DRC. You may think they're the one against a million, you know. That they don't have anyone to fight for them or to help them advocate for themselves. That's where DRC steps in. You know, this whole organization Curtis is Sneddon, working together with, with that singular DRC. mission of making sure that, that uh, disabled Kansans, you know, uh, have their rights zealously advocated for, and and you know that those rights are codified in law or whatever form the public policy requires. So. In that way, DRC really is about one voice. We wake up every day figuring out what is our role to play in all those different realms and how can we best use our resources to get justice for people with disabilities. We don't have just one key, we have multiple advocacy keys to unlock the door to justice. It's an emphasis on empowerment. Kathleen it's Sebelius, an on Kansas Governor. It's an emphasis on making sure that the laws that we have passed by the legislature, passed by Congress, are really enacted here in Kansas. Pat Roberts, well, The Disability US Rights Senate, Center of Kansas, Kansas does have a lot to celebrate on its 30th anniversary. Thanks Jerry to Moran, the Disability Rights U.S. Center, House of Representatives, Kansans have Kansas. been able to overcome obstacles they have faced. Matthew Whaley's case and the Kaufman House case and thousands of other Kansans have been helped by the Disability Rights Center. The Disability Rights Center plays an important role in making sure the rights of the disabled are protected and that their voices are heard. So I congratulate the DRC on their 30th anniversary of advocating for the disability community in Kansas. Bottom line, just keep up the good work. Disability Rights Center of Kansas. 30 years, one voice. DRC is the protection and advocacy system for Kansas. This publication is not intended to provide specific legal advice. Please contact any attorney for advice or assistance based upon your particular situation. The following federal funding partners shared in the entire cost of producing this brochure. The Administration on Developmental Disabilities. The Center for Mental Health Services, Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration. The Rehabilitation Services Administration. The Social Security Administration and Health and Human Services, Health Resources, and Services Administration. These contents are solely the responsibility of DRC and do not necessarily represent the official views of the Center for Mental Health Services, Substance Abuse, and Mental Health Services Administration.